All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about my Chris Reeve Knives Umnum Zon. Now, we're just gonna go over this as a little bit of an overview because this guy's literally like brand new to me and overall just pretty new in general. But I thought it'd be worth talking about this Umnum Zon because it was, it's really cool. I'm pretty excited to finally kind of unofficially like complete my trifecta of Chris Reeve Knives folding knives. So for folding knives, at least, like I said, like unofficially, the most well-known Chris Reeve folding knives are going to be the Sabenza, either like the 21, 31, 25, you know, all of those. Uh, the Sabenza, the Incosi, which is essentially the 25, but like the new or like its own named uh, knife, and then of course the Umnum Zon. Now, of course, they do have other folders, um, and I cannot remember the names off the top, and I don't want to butcher them because they're all like... Uh, they're all like uh, South African names, but these guys, the Umnum Zon, the Nkosi, and the Sabenza are like the most iconic knives that Saben or Chris Reeve makes, especially the Sabenza, but certainly the Umnum Zon and the Nkosi are very well known. So for me, I wanted to get these three folders in because these are like the epitome of Chris Reeve knives. So I'm very happy that I was able to complete my collection, so to speak, or trifecta, if you will. I'll get the other two out here. Of course, we have a large Micarta inlay in Kosi, and then we have a large Micarta inlay Sabenza. And so all three of these guys, if I can hold them up with one hand, are very similar in size. And uh, yeah, overall, they are very cool blades. And so I'm very happy to have all three of them in the house to represent. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there's too much more I can say about it, but they are all very cool. Hopefully I can pull all these guys out at once. But uh, yeah, so that's probably why, why I'm most pumped to have the Umnums on in the house is so that I can have all three of these guys. But they're all very cool. In this video, though, we will specifically talk about just the Umnums on. So I'm going to put these guys back. We will do another video going over all three of them at a later date. So like I said, this is the Umnums on. And I think that this kind of represents for Chris Reeve the ultimate kind of technological leap for their knives. And I'm not going to say that they don't have newer knives because the Sabenza 31 exists and it's a good knife. It has a lot of features that are in the Incosi, honestly, but the Umnum Zon in and of itself is a very unique knife for Chris Reeve. And I think that this, like I said, really represents their like peak in technology. So why I say this is first off you have, um, I don't even know quite where to begin, but first off you have the lock bar stabilizing uh, button here or whatever you'd like to call it. It's not really like a bar, but it does stabilize the lock bar and it keeps that um, lock side from hyper extending and breaking the knife. That is not present on any of their other frame lock folders, so that is something that is kind of like a leap for them in engineering. In addition to that too, they have an extended or very notable um, lock bar release or area where you can release the lock bar. It's very notable, very easy to access, and that was a, another driving force for the Umnum Zon. In addition to that too, not only do they have a double lugs, which is present on the Incosi and uh, a few other models, and of course you can now get the newer Sabenzas with double lug, but the other thing that really made the Umnum Zon popular, and what a few other knife companies have done to try to mimic it, is they made this kind of like a silent opening knife, so they have these little black O-rings, you guys hopefully can see them, but these black O-rings, when they interface with the knife in the locked position, it's designed to deaden the sound or keep it quiet and kind of cushion the knife as it's coming into its locked position. So this is something that is not present on any of their other knives. As you can see, these are the standard double lugs on a Nkosi, and you'll note hopefully you guys can hear it. When it closes, it makes a very notable kind of clicking sound that is not present on the Umnum Zon. It's also worth noting too that the Umnum Zon is a slightly different construction. Uh, very, It's more reminiscent of something like the Strider uh, SNG, where you guys can see on the back of the Strider SNG, there is no... Um, 
want to make sure I'm holding the right knife here. There's no kind of stop pin. So on a traditional um, frame lock or many other folders, there is some form or fashion of a stop pin on the back of the knife. And that, of course, literally stops the knife. But Strider was one of the first to make a kind of integral stop pin. So the stop pin is a almost like a thumb stud and so it is on the outside or it is attached to the blade of the knife so the blade is also the stop pin so that's something that is a very strider-esque feature i believe strider was the first like real knife company to do that um, a stop pin more traditionally speaking like this in Kosi, would be right here as you guys can see and can't really show it super well but you know of course as the knife uh goes into the opened position you will see that that stop pin is what creates the stop for the knife so that it doesn't travel any further backwards so that is essentially like how a traditional knife is made once again the umnum zon is made very similar to the uh, strider where it does not have a stop pin built into it but rather those deadened um, thumb studs act as your uh stop pin so to speak so it's very um i guess you would say maybe intelligent or it's at least one way to cut down on extra parts and pieces because your thumb stud can also be your stop pin and so that is the thought or the idea for this guy so that is how the uh Omnimzon is designed to work. Lastly, the other features you have, and this one for me is a little bit gimmicky, but they do advertise that you have a glass breaker. Hopefully you guys can see right here. There's a protrusion in the tang of the knife, like the blade stock protrudes here purposefully um, to be a glass breaker or like a pressure point if you were like trying to do non-lethal strikes on someone. You know, you could hit a pressure point on someone with this very small pointed object on the back of of the blade and uh, you know potentially disable them temporarily so there is that once again I feel like this is a really gimmicky feature like the last thing I'm gonna think about if I need to like break the window in my car is pulling out my umnums on and you know hitting it and arguably it's probably not gonna work that well but anyways so that is the design there this is a purposeful piece in the tang the last thing that is a carryover from the Incosi is the locking mechanism and this is a locking I believe like the locking mechanism now is the same across the board. Now, when the Umnumzon was first released, I actually believe when it was very first released, it did not have this mechanism. But now all Chris Reeves, like Sabenza 31, um, the Inkosi, the Umnumzon, all feature the same lock style or setup. And that is something I've discussed in previous videos, and you can't really see it. But essentially, the ceramic ball bearing that acts as the detent for the blade, so when it's in the closed position as a detent like you can't just pull this knife out um, but that detent ball bearing is the same ball bearing that interfaces with the blade steel so the blade interfaces uh, as far as the locking or lockup goes it interfaces with that ceramic ball bearing so it's no longer that softer titanium interfacing with a hardened piece of steel now, regardless to what you think of that locking system, those are like the major technological um, advances or features that the Umnumzon has. So essentially, like I said, the Umnumzon is meant to be Chris Reeves' kind of like ultimate technological knife like this is the most or has the most degree or highest degree of technology poured into it and it is rather advanced at least for Chris Reeve so that is the Umnum Zon as far as it goes why I wanted one and it's overall kind of an overview of it now once again I'm going to do a more in-depth video on my Umnum Zon as I use it carry it but I thought it'd be fun to do a bit more of an overview this one it is worth noting if you guys are even still watching if you made it to this part of the video this is an S45 VN version of it, and of course it has the six, and of course it has the just standard titanium stone washed handles. So, of course there is no tight or um, micarta or any form of inlay. 
uh, on these knives. They never were meant to have that. You can get some special variations that have the monkey edge frag pattern and other things, but this is technically the style or design of the Umnumzon. So it's a minimalist, but very high technologically thinking. Um, it, it's just a very well thought out knife. And some people don't like it. Some people think it's too big. Some people don't like the, you know, like flared out um, lock bar. But I think it is a very well made knife. And uh, like I said, I really like the execution of it. I think it still largely speaks to the mindset of uh, Chris Reeve as a whole, where they are trying to be very pioneering, forward thinking, and make a knife that is just very well thought out. Like you can buy from many companies nowadays a standard, you know, titanium frame lock knife, but the Emnumzon is a very well thought out blade. So, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.